in 2018, uh, the latter part of 2018 in about September, I was working my dream job. I, needless to say, I didn't make a dollar selling final expense. I was doing the door knocking. I was doing all of that and it just wasn't working. They tell me that my baby has CDH and that is why the I kept feeling heavy. The fluids, she wasn't drinking the amniotic fluids. Hey guys, welcome to my first channel. My name is Whitney. Welcome to Insurance at the dinner table. Um, I am a licensed insurance agent. I am a mom. I am a wife. I am part owner in a trucking business. And this video is going to show you how I started my career in insurance while being pregnant. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Here at the insurance at the dinner table, we will be talking about our lives as moms and insurance brokers or agents. And we also will always have a featured dish of the day, okay? So I do have some little sweets here, but we have a apricot and chickpea salad over some rice, um, which is gonna be dinner today. Um, so. That is what we're gonna do here at the insurance at the dinner table. But I wanna get started in talking about my career and how I started in insurance while being a mom, a wife, and, and doing all that stuff. So let's get into it. Um, in 2018, uh, the latter part of 2018, in about September, I was working my dream job. I was working as a nutrition assistant in the community, helping um, low-income, impoverished communities kind of manage their food dollars and budget their food uh, appropriately and kind of get some healthy foods going. And I absolutely loved it, but I made a plateau. I kind of hit like a little bump where I could not excel past where I had gotten. And it wasn't okay for me. It just wasn't. I applied, I pursued, I had met numbers. I had excelled past the, the what they expected of me. I had excelled past that and it was just nowhere for me to go and I could not have it. I had to, I had to go. So on my way out, as I was leaving, I put in my notice and stuff, I start looking around for different options and I came across insurance and so I studied for the test, I took the exam, I passed it on my first time, don't know how, um, so shocked. And then I just started figuring out where do I go next with this license, what do I do? So I found out about, I found out about, Final expense insurance. I found out the file. And so I thought that that was the avenue I needed to go. I started watching some YouTube videos um, of different people getting into final expense. None that resembled my lifestyle. None that resembled me or, or was in the situation that I was as a new, a new wife, a new uh, mom, all of this. None of that. So I tried to tweak it as best I could. But needless to say, I didn't make a dollar selling final expense. I was doing the door knocking, I was doing all of that, and it just wasn't working. Um, fast forward to, let me see, that was 2018. Fast forward to December of 2018, I found out that I'm pregnant, and um, later that month, I had a miscarriage. So, and, and also in that same month, my husband, um, we ramped up our trucking business. So, um, I found out I'm pregnant, I had the miscarriage, and then we started um, our trucking business. So 2018 was a year of transformation. It was a year of transition. There's a lot going on. Um, in March, no, in February of 2019, I found out that I'm pregnant again. And um, at this point, um, I'm done with final expense. I had made not one single cent. I was door knocking, I was buying leads, I was spending my gas, going to meet these leads and stuff, and it wasn't working. So I, I pivoted and I started thinking about health insurance. And I'm like, this is a time period where I think we had the penalty if you didn't have credible coverage. So it's like, people need health insurance. They're going to get health insurance. Selling life insurance is a definite hard sale if you have not sold anything ever before like me. So I'm like, I'll just transform my health plans into life plans when the time comes, once I get the established relationship with them, but initially going to somebody's house and say, hey, let's talk about you dying was not a thing I could do. So um, 
Um, I found out I'm pregnant again. Um, I'm looking into health insurance. I found an ad on Craigslist and it's for a lot of different FMO, what's, you know, that starts in specializing in health insurance. And it actually worked out. I mean, I got the training that I didn't have the first go around. I got these modules. I had a camaraderie of other agents around me. It was beautiful. Um, I'm getting bigger and bigger, and bigger by the day. And, but it was just fun. It was fun hanging out with them and learning and bouncing ideas off each other. Hey, I got this client, this, that, and the other. Um, and the modules and the training that I used to get online was not ever helping me. It just wasn't. I'm not that person. I don't learn like that. But when I was sitting around other people and hearing hey, how they handled the situation, whether it be an outright customer or how they um, pivot somebody from kind of, I didn't hear about talking about my grandkids, but we kind of got to get back on track about completing this application. How they, you know, did things like that, I would use and I would put my own spin on it and I would use it. And that's pretty much how I learned. So, um, in September of 2019, uh, in September, I'm eight months pregnant. Mind you, um, I ha also have a four-year-old stepson at home and we got our business and everything going. Um, my body was really weighed down during this pregnancy. It was just really, really hard. And I was getting heavy, heavier and heavier by the day. And I'm like, why? Is my belly so low? Why is my back hurting? I couldn't do things. Um, but I meant that if the only thing that I did for the day was make some phone calls or um, follow up with a client, I was going to do something. So I kept pushing through that. But at this particular doctor's appointment, I had to ask the doctor for um, an ultrasound. Moms know, like at eight months, the ultrasounds are done. If you're, you know, if your baby's uh, good and healthy, you're not getting any more ultrasounds. So I, I kind of begged the doctor for another ultrasound when the, the, the ultrasound technician was doing it. I mean, she started looking and she said, hey, do you know anything about anything wrong with your baby? I'm like, no. She's like, well, let me get the doctor. Maybe I'm seeing something. I don't, I don't know. Let me just ask the doctor. She, the doctor comes in. Another nurse comes in. And like, oh, my, all these people are coming in. I'm like, what's going on? I'm by myself at this appointment. And they tell me that my baby has CDH. And that is why the I kept feeling heavy. The fluids, she wasn't drinking the amniotic fluids. So it was just build up, build up of fluids. And CDH is, stands for chronic diaphragmatic hernia. And in her, um, her hernia is what separates her abdomen from her um, digestive system. And so she had a hole in that. And so her intestines was coming up through the hole and kind of like lodged in her chest. Her heart was shifted and her lung, um, was underdeveloped. So when she came out at, at the time of delivery, she wouldn't have been able to inhale and exhale. So I had to even be at a specific hospital here where I'm at in Virginia. I had to be at a certain hospital. The hospital that I was planning on having her at um, would not have been prepared for that. So it is just by the grace of God that we found out a month before she was actually due that we had to you know, make those arrangements. So the next 30 days, right when open enrollment is about to start, those next 30 days, um, I was in and out, in and out of hospitals, getting checked. I had to be on a monitor where they monitor her heart, all of this stuff. Um, and she was born on October 8th. And this is my very first open enrollment coming up starting October 15th. And so we spent the next 43 days in the NICU. So insurance uh, and the NICU is what that was about. And um, it was amazing. We... Um, Managed to get through it I, um, the, the best way I knew how. It was not easy at all seeing my firstborn like that. Um, but thanks be to God that she is healthy. She's fine. Everything worked out. Um, and I was able to still sit in the room with her and make phone calls and talk to people. And a lot of the times they sympathized with me and they empathized with me. And it was really refreshing. Um, that I wasn't somebody at a call center. I said, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm at the hospital. The doctor comes by, I might have to hang up, call you back. Oh, that's no problem, that's no problem. So um, we got through that. At the end of December, I got an email um, from the company and they said that I had made top 10 in the country. So I don't, I'm not sure exactly how that happened. I'm really not. I had made top 10 of new agents. So not everybody in general, but of the new agents that had came in that year, I had made top 10. I really don't think I was any higher than seven, you know, like came that close. I think I was maybe seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. 
I can't, I don't see it being any um, lower than that, but it was amazing. I got an all expense trip to Texas. They, um, and we had a ball. They, they gave us techniques on how to kind of keep the ball rolling. Cause sometimes you can come in hot and then really don't know where to go next. Cause you had hit all these different milestones throughout the year. So they gave us tips on that. Um, we had a ball, we, we partied and, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, I was really, really proud of myself. Really proud of myself with starting the, the trucking business with um, being a, a new wife, a new mom, a new homeowner, uh, a new stepmom, a brand new insurance agent. I was really, really, really proud of myself that that, um, that, that happened for me. So I, I took that as a, as a badge of honor. Um, April of 2020, I was my anniversary with um, the FMO, kind of like my anniversary to have my insurance agent, um, insurance license because before, prior to that I had made zero dollars. So uh, my insurance anniversary. So I started thinking about what's the next level. What what level? What can I level up again? Remember, this is a pattern with me. Like how? What's the next level I can do? So it's like Medicare. I have to do Medicare. I want to not be able to turn people away when they call me. Cause I used to get a lot of calls like, hey, yeah, I can look for my Medicare and I would have to send them somewhere else. I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. So I started looking at my Medicare license and um, the options to do a Medicare license. And um, I passed, I passed my AHIP and I started getting contract with carriers. And now we're entering our, the next open enrollment and now AEP. So that was so fun. I also reached milestones with that. Um, and in that process, we're still growing. My, my baby's turning into a toddler. Uh, my stepson is going to kindergarten. We managed and we maneuvered this thing. Trucking business is booming. Um, so I go through my second open enrollment and my first AP in 2020. And that was also good. Milestones hit, numbers hit, money's coming. It was beautiful. And that led me all the way into January or February of 2021. A big thing happened. Number one, I won a contest. I had during open enrollment, some some of these carriers and some of these FMOs, whatever they give out contests. Um, I had outright won a contest, and I was not paid for that contest. Um, I was told that they were going to give me a thousand dollars instead of the reward that was ten thousand dollars, and no one can give me an explanation as to why. Like, why am I not getting? It clearly said that I was number one, and clearly this is a prize for number one. And they gave it to someone else. I said, "Oh no, this is not going to work for me." Um, they gave me a thousand dollars in leads, and then a thousand dollars cash money. I'm like, "Well, did I win or did I not win? What what is it?" Um, that on top of um, a lot of other things that was happening from the regional perspective was not sitting right with me. So I put in my. Um, I wanted to be let go, and I put in my not resignation, but my release letter i wanted to be released and i started my own agency trent management services yes i started my own agency and from there that was a struggle so 2021 income wise was not the best for me but it was a year of hustle and i had to figure out how to start an agency what i needed to do how do i do it get contracted with these carriers on an agency level and not um tied to that upline. I needed to do that and that worked out perfectly. So this past AP in open enrollment, I came out the gate swinging because I was under myself and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and I will, ne I don't regret anything in this process. Um, I was able to get hooked up with um, different options and different carriers that gave me co-op and all the stuff opportunities that i didn't have when i was with the larger effort mode so it has been beautiful this has been a ride an opportunity i'm excited about deep going deeper and sharing more videos about exactly the transition and what it took to get to where i'm at so guys please stay tuned we're gonna eat this food before it get cold um check back with us shortly on um other videos and let's go Insurance at the dinner table. Stay tuned. Subscribe, guys. Like, share, do all that stuff. Yeah.